Now concentration idea, this applies to electrolyte, which is concentrated. And the question will tell us that the concentration is high. And if the concentration is high and the difference in the E value is very small, then the species with the higher concentration will actually be discharged. So we will talk about this along the way. But the gist of it is if the difference in the E value is very small, then this means that the ease of oxidation or ease of reduction is roughly the same. And therefore, E value is not so important anymore. Concentration is more important. So one with a higher concentration will be discharged. So uh, this is one way of viewing this. In my opinion, this is the easier way uh, because it is a little bit more simplistic. But later we will talk about the explanation, what is actually the concentration factor and how does it affect the E value. So we will discuss that as well. We will talk about this in a while. So if I consider exercise 9, uh, let's use an example to talk about it. Brine or concentrated sodium chloride electrolyzed using platinum electrode. So I want to same thing determine the products at the inode and the cathode. The question is also asking us for the electrolyte in the solution. So let us consider same thing. If it is concentrated sodium chloride, cation will be Na+. Concentrated means water is still there. So this is aqueous. We have to consider water. Cl minus aqueous, we have to consider water. All right. So remember concentrated, water is still present. So species migrating to the cathode, we have to consider Na+. Plus. We have to consider water. Same thing if you consider reduction, the species must be found on the left hand side of the half equation. So we look out for Na+, plus on the left hand side. We look out for water on the left hand side of the half equation. And again, let us try to do this together uh, just to have a sense of it. Na+, plus on the left hand side is here. There's only one guy. Na+, plus on the left hand side, minus 2.71 volt, correct? So this copy this whole thing down. Very, very straightforward. Now, involving our hydrogen, uh, involving your water on the left hand side of the half equation. We roughly know where to find this guy. It is here. Only water is present. No other species is present. So therefore, this must be involving the reduction of water. Water reduced to H2 minus 0.83 volt. So this is the one that we will be using. So same thing, once you find it, copy the whole thing down, including the E value, and then we exit the data booklet. So if Again, we focus on the correct side of the half equation. It's actually very, very fast. And again, a lot less confusing. I, guess, I think that's more important, huh? a lot less confusing. So these are the two half equations that we should have. Reduction of Na plus E value is minus 2.71. Reduction of water E value is minus 0.83 volt. So comparing these two, the E value difference is very, very big. In fact, it's about two volts difference. So comparing these two, it means that Na plus is significantly harder to reduce as compared to water. So even if Na plus has a very high concentration, it doesn't really matter. We still just compare E value. Usually how big is big uh, in chemistry, how big is big or how similar is similar really is a very, very subjective term. And uh, again, it depends on the scenario. But I think one vote, it is a pretty good gauge. If it is more than one vote difference, then we will consider the difference is big. The concentration factor doesn't come in anymore, the E value is more important. One way we can say that is uh, even though the concentration for Na plus is very high, but since the E value, it is much, much more negative than water. So it's very, very difficult for me to reduce Na plus. In equals medium, it's not possible for me to reduce Na plus. All right. So water will still be discharged at your cathode. And therefore, we will just consider the reduction of water. Water reduced to give me H2. Again, just copy this in the forward direction. Just change this reversible sign to a full arrow, then we can consider the reduction. Again, okay, at secondary level, what we memorize is, oh, if it is concentrated NaCl, Na plus will never be discharged. Then Cl minus will be discharged. Again, at secondary level, what we did is we did by memorizing. Now what we want to do is we want to compare E value to deduce. If the E value difference is very big, one guy is significantly more likely reduced than the other one. In this case, water is significantly more likely reduced than Na plus. So concentration factor doesn't come in at all. It's not important. We just focus on the E value. So involving the cathode is pretty straightforward. The one which is interesting will be our anode. So let's take a look at that. Species migrating to your anode, I'll have to consider Cl minus. Right? I also have to consider water. So same story here. And if species undergoes oxidation, it has to be found on the right hand side of the half equation. Again, Decide which side of the half equation you want to find that guy first. Open data booklet, find that guy, then copy the 
relevant half equation down exit data booklet. If you have more than one choice, then we roughly know what to work towards. And let us see whether we can apply this to Cl minus and water. Let's take a look at the data booklet. Maybe we find water first because we are more familiar with water already. So the idea involving water is this. Huh? Oxidation of water means that only water is on the right hand side. Nobody else is there. Because if water is together with somebody else, you'll be the other guy that takes part in oxidation. So I only want water present, no other species present. So you notice I have water here. Only water is there. So this must be oxidation of water. And I have water here. Only water is there. So it must be oxidation of water. But if I have two choices, then what we do is we look at the oxidation state for the product, see which one is more stable or see which one is more common. That is a better choice. Peroxide is a minus one. No good. O2 is a zero. Uh, this is better. So which one we choose? One point two three volt. Because oxidation state for oxygen usually is a zero or a minus two. If it is common, means that it is stable. The more common this is, the more stable this will be. So between zero oxidation state and minus one oxidation state, obviously we will choose a zero oxidation state. So we will reject the 177 now, we will choose the 123. So this is involving water. Now, how about Cl minus? Now Cl minus is of course on top. Cl minus, if you try to find the half equation, uh, interestingly, we can also find two. You notice I have the blue chloride and I have the green chloride. Again, two choices. And which is a better choice? Which is a better half equation that we want to use? Again, don't look at E value. Look at oxidation state for the product. If the oxidation state for the products are different, then we see which one is more common. That's a better choice. The green chloride will be oxidized to chlorine element. Oxidation state is zero. This is the blue. Uh, the blue chloride oxidized to your element Cl2. Oxidation state is zero. The green chloride oxidized to chlorate one. Oxidation state for this guy, it is a plus one. So which one is more common? Which one we see more often? Chlorine usually is either zero or minus one. We see this a lot more often. So zero oxidation state is better or more stable than plus one oxidation state. So we will choose this 1.36 volt. We will choose this half equation 1.36 volt. So you notice the technique involving when you encounter the discharge of Cl minus involving two possible options, which is a better choice. We look at the oxidation state for the product, see which one is more common, means that it is more stable. So that will be the half equation that we are choosing. You notice this technique come from where? Come from choosing the half equation involving water. So the technique is exactly the same. So if you do by memorizing, every time I use water, right? Because electrolysis, that's equals medium. Definitely I will use water. So why do I need to refer to the data booklet? I just memorize this half equation, then I can use it all the time, true. You can memorize it, we will know which half equation to use because you memorized it, but the technique involving why you choose this half equation is not there. Then when you try to apply this to other instances, either you have to pick up that technique independently or you're not familiar with that. So my suggestion is actually there's no need to memorize things, especially if it is available in the data booklet. So learn how to choose the half equation in a data booklet and it will serve us well, all right? Because we can apply this to other instances. Highly recommended we do that. Again, if you do it enough times, which is true, you know, because we use water all the time, you keep referring to it. After a while, when you refer to the data booklet and you see water oxidized to peroxide, automatically you reject it because you know that that's not the answer that you want. Also, it's a memorizing, but you do by repetition. That means you run through the technique. You are so familiar with the technique, you roughly know what is the outcome. It's also memorizing, but it's not brute memorizing. Brute memorizing means that the process is, you don't have the process, you only memorize the outcome. So I think it's a good idea to run through the process and so that we can pick this idea up and I can apply this to non-standard species. We want the application. We want to be able to apply this to other instances. And we want to be familiar with choosing the half equation from the data booklet. So this technique, we need to pick this up and we try to apply this to all instances. Then when we do more difficult questions or we encounter more difficult species, we roughly know what are the things that we need to take note of to decide which is a better half equation to choose, correct? So hopefully the appreciation is there. It's actually not difficult. The suggestion is just as much as possible, just refer to the data booklet, learn how to pick the relevant half equation. So the two half equations are here. 
plus 1.36 for Cl minus plus 1.23 for water. Now, you notice these two values are very, very close. The E value is about like 0.1 volt difference. So what is the significance of that? Because E value measures the tendency for reduction. It also measures the tendency for oxidation. So it means that if I have a very small difference in the E value, it tells me that the ease of oxidation for these two guys are roughly the same. Or another way to say this is, your oxidation of Cl- and oxidation of water is equally easy, or the difficulty in terms of oxidation for these two guys is actually equally uh, roughly the same, uh, because the E values are very, very close. So it will mean that the E value is not so important anymore, and when you have the concentration factor where your Cl- is concentrated, the concentration factor will come in and override the E value factor. So the one with the higher concentration, which is my Cl- minus, will be discharged instead. Then we will consider oxidation of Cl-, Cl- will be oxidized to Cl2.